We have reached the part of the podcast. We're going to talk some NASCAR Phoenix this week. And who better to come on than my boy, Brandon. Brandon, how are you doing today, my man? Early morning with you, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm filming a little later. Uh, I'll just say this to everybody. United Center food, I would stay away from it, my man. <laughs> stay away from it. A little rough, little rough on the kid yesterday. So, obviously, the big news, and we really didn't touch on it, because it happened after we recorded last week. Your boy, Chase, broken shin. What are your thoughts? Out for six weeks. Uh, some teams have policies in place to where what drivers can and can't do off the track. Hendrick Motorsports doesn't. Uh, why he's in Colorado snowboarding on a Friday when he had to be in Phoenix the next day. I don't know. Living his best life. I don't think it was the best choice. I know a lot of these drivers go out and race cars and different series and all this throughout the week and weekend. Cool. You're snowboarding. So fingers crossed for all Chase fans. NASCAR has to grant him the medical waiver. Um, I don't see how they're going to deny him a medical waiver. Since I, hope was- they deny him. I hope they deny him just to be a <sighs> dick. Anyways, I hope they don't deny him. But uh, – He's going to have to get a medical waiver, even be eligible for a championship. He's not going to have stage points, playoff points for at least the next six weeks. So um, Kyle Busch got a medical waiver for an on-track accident. Tony Stewart got a medical waiver for an off-track accident. It'll be interesting, but they will not even think about granting it to him until after he is returning or able to return. But how can I word this? He's the face. And you got to take care of the franchise. Correct. I mean, if Alex Bowman at Puttery on Thursday night drinking whiskey 24 hours before he's going to practice, if I would have hit him with my golf club in his shin, does he get granted the medical waiver? Yeah, that's interesting. I don't <laughs> I don't know. Um, now, let's shift our attention over to, obviously, this race. Obviously – Historically speaking, and you're going to be proud of me, one of the people that do, always does good here is my boy, Uncle Kev. Uncle Kev always does really good here, but I'm not taking him because he's at 10 to 1. To me, that's just way too short of a price to be backing Kevin Harvick at 10 to 1. I agree completely. Fade Harvick, please. Um, Now, I will say this. Logano, I know we both like Logano. Logano is sitting at eight to one. Last six races here, he's finished one, eight, 11, two, three, and one. Best finish and most laps led. I locked him in at eight to one. I'm assuming you you like him as well. I don't like him personally, but, and you know that, but eight to one, you can't argue the stats are there. The wins are there. The finishes, everything's there for him at this track. I don't like betting that low, but you can't steer away from an eight to one at all. Yeah. So we're both on Logano eight to one. Brandon, what's your next bet here? I'm going Bell. Bell's look good at Phoenix multiple times. Uh, Bell's good at, you consider this a short track. Um, I expect him to come out, finally have a good race. There's been already ups and downs for him. But uh, with him being a short track guy, enjoys putting the bumper to people, moving them out of the way. I'm definitely going Christopher Bell at 11 to 1. I like that one. I'm going Hamlin at 10 to 1. Last five races, 8, um, eight 13, 3, 3, 4. One here in 2019 has looked good to start the season. I think with everything going on, there's always one driver that kind of gets overlooked, and I kind of feel that's Hamlin right now. I agree. I agree completely. Uh, another guy that's being overlooked but is first in the points right now and just started off very well is uh, Ross Chastain, and he's sitting at 14-1. to 1. He doesn't have great track history. Like, there's nothing phenomenal about this track. But I'm going to ride the momentum wave right now with a driver early on because he seems like the only one that's consistent so far. And seeing him at 14-1, to 1, I'm locking it in today before qualifying. I like that. I like it a lot. My next one are going top top tens. My first one, I am going Amarillo top ten. Average finish at Phoenix eleven point seven. Two top tens in last six races there, and I just kind of feel I'm getting close to 
over two to one in a top 10 price for Almarello when he has historically done good at this track. Absolutely a no brainer for me. I like that. I'm going to sit here and go with Mr. Austin Sendrick as my long shot at either 50 to 60 to one, depending on the book. Um, his top 10 right now is plus 275. So I'm going to sprinkle a top 10 with my long shot at 275. I just find it weird that he's sitting at almost 60 to one and then has a plus 275. Um, Penske car, Blaney will be good. We're talking Logano. You know that uh, that Penske team is going to be rolling at Phoenix. So I like him as a long shot and a top uh, top 10 at 275. I That's my last bet. Austin Sunder, top 10 plus 275. My thing is this. He has the same equipment as Logano and Blaney, and we're seeing yeah. these guys at minus like 700 to be top 10s, two betting favorites to win the race. Has had a good start to the year, finished 11th here last year. What am I missing? You know what I, I mean? Don't like, know. What I'm, am I missing here? So, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping we found the, the Vegas typo because yeah. everything points at him having a good race. The right equipment, teammates favored to win the race. They, they talk. They don't give away all their secrets, but they talk, and the cars are going to be good. Just stay out of trouble. So I like – do you have any more? Because those are my four, my friend. No, that's what I'm rolling with, buddy. Now, in turn, now looking back at last week, William Byron obviously dominated the race. What was your takeaways from last week? A boring race. Once you had clean air and you're out front, nobody's getting you. Um, I thought the no tire option at the end of the race was uh, was interesting because that shows you how much the clean air means. Truex said, I'm not going to pit, but you can already see that tires outweigh clean air right now after a long run. Interesting. Yeah, I thought, A, I thought the race was insanely boring. Yeah. B, I, Byron completely and utterly, it wasn't even close, dude. It oh, was, good for good for him. Like, good for him. I, I, Bowman was there. Like, Hendricks looked good. Which, by the way, it came out this morning. I don't know what piece of equipment, but every single Hendricks car had a piece of equipment removed late last night that was illegal and is now being confiscated and investigated. That's all the detail I have. And so, why don't you tell everyone which drivers those are? That is. Whoever, I think Josh Berry, who's subbing in for Chase, Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman, and William Byron. Interesting. And Interesting. I don't know if they qualify today, if those parts are confiscated, if they have to still start in a rear and not be able to qualify. So just keep your eye on that before you place your bet on any Hendricks driver for Sunday. Brandon, I'd like to thank you for coming on. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Boston Boy 83, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's cash some tickets. Let's make some money. And uh, we'll talk next week, my friend. Rebound week. Let's go.